a relative. Oh, why would it not be one of the very first? Because the page was canceled. Yeah, I left that off. Shoot. Dang, he knows me. I could change it all. I could change everything. Yeah. And notice it was x to the negative one half. Yeah. So that's why it should have been on bottom. Okay. Wait, so. Just look would that still be negative? Yeah. That's I mean, you shouldn't change anything. You said it was x impression. That makes me. Okay, so 1 over the square root of 1 fourth, which is 1 half. So that's 2 minus 4, that's still negative. So if I plug in 9, I get 1 third minus 1 ninth, which is still positive. So we're still good. So x equals 1 is a relative min cause f prime of x changes from negative to positive. Okay, on C, for a certain value of the constant k, the graph of f has a point of inflection at the x-axis. Find this value of k. So, again, points of inflection occur when what? Zero. When, when positive to negative. No. No. And positive to negative. No. So the slope of x. When x is zero. F prime of x is zero or under five. That's critical value. When it's zero. When what? F, F double prime, prime is there zero. There we go. When F double prime is equal to zero or undefined, that's Wait, when you get possible the points of inflection. What's the difference between critical value and possible? Critical values are possible relative, uh, relative mins and maxes. And points, points of, of possible inflection. points of inflections are where it changes concavity. Good question. So on a double prime of x, the point of inflection is when it's zero. Yes. On double prime. Of x. No, same. on prime, it's a max or a min. Yes, but the points of inflection, we did the same kind of math that we worked with. Yeah, so like for the bell work over here, when we did the bell work, mm -hmm. right here, mm -hmm. this was f prime, and this maximum was our possible point of inflection. Okay. Because that's where it changed slope. Would it also be at 1, 2, because it changes slope? On this particular, on yeah. the bell work? Yeah. At 1. At 1? No, it doesn't change slope. Or negative slope. 1, negative 1. Negative 1. It's See, still going one from one positive one. to positive. So, okay. It doesn't matter if it's changing slope, as long as, long as, as, long as it's not changing sign. Good. Okay, part C. So we're going to take f double prime, which was negative k over 4 x to the 3 over 2 plus 1 over x squared. Just want to make sure I had it written this way. And that's where it's equal to 0. Yes, second derivative is where it's equal to zero. Uh, no, that was on B. No, it's no, no. K's two. No, you're wrong. We don't know what K is on this one. You're solving for K. Ah. So the first part here, we're going to have like 
an equation into unknowns. So let's just go ahead and get k by itself. So I'm going to subtract the number of That's yeah. what you want to do? It? Okay. So negative k over 4x to the 3 halves was negative 1 over x squared. Multiply by negative 4 over x to the 3 halves. Ooh. Wouldn't it be negative? She said it, but didn't write it. I didn't write what? The negative for the 1 over, one over x squared. Oh. You said it. Sure did. I remember saying that. Thank you. Yeah, All right. So we end up with k equals um, 4x to the 3 halves over x to the 4 halves. So that would be 4 over x to the 1 half. No. Because you divided by negative 1 to make sure you get positive k. Negative times because negative. Because it's negative k. Yeah, yeah, but that's where this negative came in. That's where the okay, negative k yeah. would be. We did that. <laughs> I get lost. I do too. This is why we have Wynn, but Wynn's not here. Right? She's not here. That's why we have me. No. I can crack this thing up. Okay, so here we go. Mm -hmm. Then it says the graph of F has a point of inflection on the X axis. So that means that F of X is on the X axis. F of X has to be equal to zero. This means on the x axis. So f of x is that original equation, kx to the one half minus natural log of x equals zero. Now think about it. The reason why it is uh, zero. Is it supposed to say our x-axis? On. On. Um. If it's bless you. If it's on the x-axis, think about it. It's x and then zero for the y. So that's why I'm saying it has to equal zero. The y coordinate. So let's see here. I'm gonna add natural log of x to both sides. My natural log is just keeping it over so. And divide by x to the one half. And now notice this is k and this is k. So what am I going to do to find k? Plug it in. Let's set those two things equal to each other. 4 over x to the 1 half equals natural log of x over x to the 1 half. We do a cross and multiply? Mm -hmm. 4x to the 1 half equals x to the 1 half times natural log of x. And if I divide by x to the 1 half, those go away. How do I get rid of natural log? Now our whole the whole question is supposed to be find k. We found x. Oh my gosh. Oh, we're gonna have to plug e to the fourth. No, it's not that bad. 4 over e to the 4th to the 1 half. 4 over 2, that's e squared. Yeah. <laughs> Cute. I thought so. Okay. Do you remember how to tie dye shirts? Do you remember how to tie shirts for the day? Mm -hmm. Or the mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, I'm going to give you what you have here. I'm going to get the answers and put those on, and then tomorrow we can ask questions about it. I didn't already put them on there. We probably could have had tests tomorrow night, and I don't want to do that. I want to have time to go over it. So. I'm not going to review. <laughs>